Oh, hello. So what we're going to talk about today is some interior photography. Interiors photography. Interior photography? I don't know. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to edit this photo. We're going to retouch it. We're going to get rid of all the stuff, all this nonsense, all that and that. We're going to get rid of all that. We're going to blend multiple exposures, get our window pulls and an ambient. So with that being said, we need to go ahead and jump right into this. So Canon T3i, this is what it was shot with, with a Canon 10 to 22 millimeter EFS lens. Pretty nice setup for real estate. I don't think you can get a much more simpler setup, but uh, it works. It works really well. Um, lit with a Godox AD200. Also, you can get them as the Flashpoint variants. Uh, or the versions, I guess they're both the pretty much they're both pretty much the same. Uh, the only difference being the branding on them. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and select all of these images. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Command A, that selects all the images, and I'm going to scroll all the way down here and remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. So with this Canon 10 to 22 millimeter lens, there is a ton of chromatic aberration, mainly in the magentas. So I typically will go to the manual section and I'll dial in a couple, couple uh, defringe amounts here. If you want to get specific, you can always use the eyedropper tool and select it, but I just go with simple stuff. All right, let's go ahead and go up here. And now we are going to want to do our white balance. So white balance typically varies from frame to frame uh, because it really depends on what you're flashing or what you're bouncing off of. So if I was bouncing off of this, for example, our white balance would be a little bit warmer compared to something like this. So I would choose to go with a auto white balance just to start with. And then I'll use the histogram uh, to basically, uh, whoa, that was my hand. Can you hear that? Gross. Um, basically I will use the histogram and the colors in the histogram to adjust white balance accordingly. So we are pretty good here. We're almost, we're not neutral, but we're really close to it. So if we deselect by hitting command D and go to our first image here, I'm going to bring the exposure down just a hair and I will use my arrow keys, my up and down arrow keys to adjust this. So, so you see this little tiny sliver of blue, that means we're too cool. So if I went with this, we're obviously way too cool. We got too much blue in the highlights. We want to push that more towards warm and we will go ahead and go with something like this, a 4,700 degrees Kelvin with a tint of 13. It will always vary between shots. So I wouldn't write any of these numbers down unless you want to make like a preset to start off with. But, uh, so that's pretty much it. If you want to go a little bit warmer, you can, but I prefer to go with something a little bit more neutral and decide later if I want to go warmer or cooler. Um, most of the time I go warmer. And then let's move on to this frame. I'm going to bring the exposure down. And I'm basically just holding down this middle section of the histogram and just moving it about. And that will adjust the exposure. You can do the same things by going to the end on the left, and adjusting shadows or blacks, going to the right, highlights and whites. But I typically don't do that. I just use the exposure slider little thingy. So I think... Yeah, we're a little bit too warm in the highlights and the upper mid tones. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring this in just a little bit. Yeah, about right there. Let's go ahead and go with this one as well. We want to adjust that white balance. 
because we are a little bit too warm and a little bit too green. Oh, that's a little bit too much. So around there and maybe put a little bit of magenta in that tint. So let's go ahead and go to this one. Now I wish you could just take like a section and just white balance it off that. Harper, you're being loud. Can you guys hear that? That's my dog. It's my doggy. Um, but I wish you could just take a section, like just highlight a section and get a white balance reading in the histogram off of that. Because what it's doing is taking an average of the the entire image. So if a, an ex, if a section is really warm over here, it's not gonna really show up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit W on the keyboard. That brings up the white balance tool and I'm just gonna click an area that's white. And that should, that should be good to go. This one, this one I would want 5,500 degrees Kelvin. And then I'm gonna bring the exposure about right there, which is plus 0.10. And then this one as well. So 5,500 degrees Kelvin, and I'm pointing this flash at these windows right here. So let's go ahead and bring this up just a hair. And then the ambient, I usually don't touch the white balance for unless I'm trying to do something really specific with it. So it's gonna go into luminosity blend mode, which doesn't take any of the color, it just takes the brightness value. And, and it blends it that way. So we don't really need to worry about the color. So let's go back to our first image. And we are going to want to, I'm gonna turn this on, which is our, our uh, not peaking, what is this? Clipping. Is our clipping thingy. So our clipping in the white point. And I'm going to bring the highlights down to where they're not they're not clipping. Which is about <laughs> at 100. Negative 100. So that's pretty good. I don't have a big issue with the shadows or anything like that. I think they're pretty good. Uh, moving on to the next one. Same thing, bring it down, bring the highlights down. I think right, the, whoop, right about there, it's negative 78. It's looking good. This one, this one will probably be around the same, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, about negative 98. This one, I don't have too big of an issue with. Mainly because if we bring the highlights down, it's going to want to bring this um, exposure in this area down way too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring it so it's uh, not affecting this area too much. So that looks pretty good. Maybe the exposure is a little bit too, too dark. This one, not much of an issue here because um, I actually want this to be really bright and the, the exterior to be fairly dark. Um, I'm not too worried about the, the, uh, the sky or anything like that. Um, I might show you guys how to do a sky replacement for interiors someday. Maybe today, I don't know. This one, yeah, they both are pretty, pretty uh, consistent. So this one, highlights need to be brought down. And we're gonna go with a negative 95 and then I'm gonna bring up the shadows just just a hair it's about right there and now what we want to do what do we want to do we're pretty much like done with the pre-processing if you guys want to put like your own little touches on it Maybe this is a little bit too cool. Yeah, it's a little bit too cool. Yeah, there we go. That one's also a little bit too cool. Maybe my eyes are all wonky. Yeah, those look fairly consistent. Okay, cool. Now that we have everything pre-processed, we need to Command-A, 
It's going to select all the images, right click and edit and open as layers in Photoshop. So that's going to basically stack all your images as layers into one document. So it's easy to work with. You don't have to drag and drop a bunch of uh, layers into one document. This basically does that all for you. So while this is loading, I need to check my phone real quick. I have a new post. Oh, interesting. So let's get to it. Okay. So the layers are not in order. You can always go in and just like rearrange them like this. Um, I'm not going to do that since I shoot this in a very specific way to the point where I can arrange these in reverse and it basically gets it about 98% the way I want it to. So we're going to go highlight all these layers. So I'm going to select the top layer, hold down shift, select the bottom layer, or you can always go to select all layers and I'm going to go layer, arrange, reverse. That's going to reverse all the layers in the stack. So now our top layer is now at the bottom and our, these layers will get blended. So I'm going to want this on top because I want to blend these as our base. So I'm going to put a layer mask on that. Go to G for the burr, uh, the, not the brush, the gradient. And I'm going to go up here to the gradient editor and I'm going to choose foreground to transparent. That way we can swap between black and white and it'll just make more sense as opposed to just the standard black and white. So I'm going to go in from this side. I'm going to make a really general um, pass through this. Then I'm going to get more and more specific. So that looks pretty good. And that over here we have our, our leggies. So we need to go with a white and then just basically get that in there, in there, <laughs> can't talk. So that's pretty much a good base to go off of. We have a couple glaring issues like this <laughs> glaring issues and I'm talking about a glare, <laughs> kill me. So glare, uh, what, what, hotspot, glare blah, 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 shadows that don't make any sense. We need to go ahead and fix that. So we'll get there. Now what we want to do is take this layer and we are going to set the blend mode to darken, duplicate it, and then set the blend mode to lighten, and then put a black layer mask on this. So hold down option or alt, and then add layer mask. And now we just want to work with our darken layer. Our darken layer is pretty much going to be for fixing any glaring, <laughs> any glaring issues. Oh my God. I got to stop doing that. <laughs> it's, um, but it's going to fix a lot of the stuff that we have. Um, so this being our behind the camera flash, we need to basically just brush it in just like so. And I'm using a Wacom tablet today. And I just realized I didn't explain any of the layers to you guys. And I don't want to re-record. So this layer, this, um, let me change that to normal. This layer is just a behind the camera flash layer. And, um, these layers right here. That's just one side bounced off this to light this side. And then this one is vice versa. So hopefully that made sense. I have a couple more videos on my channel that go into this a little bit further. Um, but I'm sorry that I forgot about that. Um, so yeah, make this a little bit bigger and I'm just holding down control and this is on a Mac control option, click and drag up and down changes the hardness I like to have my hardness at like 15 and then change the size you go left and right so I want to brush in that's a little bit too 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 much I brush in right there right there as well 
cool beans. Cool. Okay, cool. That looks good. Now what we want to do is I want to use the lighten layer to get a little bit more detail in the shadows in our foreground. So I'm going to want to, it's a little bit too small. So about right there. And basically we're just flattening it out just so we can get all that color. And um, what would you call it? Color and uh, brightness. There we go. But mainly color. I just want to go over here as well. Get a little bit underneath these cabinets. And I'm not looking for like a good like exposure for the whole thing. I'm looking at these dark areas and I'm going, okay, these are a little bit too dark. When I blend the image in luminosity or blend the ambient in luminosity, it's not going to get any of that color because there's no data there. Same thing goes with white. So let's go ahead and blend this. I'm going to change the blend mode to lighten. Lightener screen. Do I want to go lightener screen? Lighten. I'm going to hold down option, add a layer mask. And we're just going to paint. Okay. That looks real snazzy. I think I'm a little bit in that reflection. So yeah, there we go. Cool beans. I think it's a little bit too bright. So let me drop the opacity. Yeah, about like 82%. That's looking real good. And then these two images right here with our window pool need to be brought up, turned off. And now we can go to the ambient. Set that bad boy to luminosity. Look at that. Look at that. Color corrected and everything. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now we want to put a black mask on that. Oh, it's gone now. So let's go ahead and make a little bit of an adjustment here. Hit X on the keyboard to get to a white paintbrush. We are just going to do some cool little circles. Circles. I like circles. So, yeah, that looks super good. Except for maybe over here, it's a little bit too much. And I'm just looking at my navigator just to see if the blend is smooth enough. Okay. Looks pretty good. We got some wicked moire right here. Jesus. That's not good at all. But I don't know how to fix it. I mean, I kind of know how to fix it in Lightroom, but like, not, not really. Okay, let me get a little bit bigger brush and then just back it down. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, now, what do we want to do? Everything looks pretty good. I'm going to blend in these windows. So this one is for this sliding glass door. Set that bad boy to a darken. And I'm just going to use it for, let me rotate this. So I'm holding down R and I'm just rotating a little bit just so I can have an easier brushing time, I guess, is what you could call it. I'm just brushing, 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 brushing. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm actually tilting my head as I'm doing this. Just get a little bit more detail. Whoops. A little bit more detail, control option that will adjust the brush size. Okay, that looks pretty 
good. Let's see if I missed anything. Yeah. Okay, cool. That looks pretty good. I just want to fix reset view this area. That area is looking weird. So I'm going to get the polygonal lasso tool with a one pixel feather. I'm just going to go ahead and do, 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 just do a little bit of a whoops, delete or backspace will allow you to redo. It's not a path. It's more like a selection, but it'll allow you to redo your selection, your most recent selection. There we go. Delete. That looks pretty good. Maybe a, a little bit weird right there. So let's go with the brush tool. Let me get rid of this. Hmm. No. Yeah. Okay, cool. That looks really good. What's going on right there? What's this? Maybe I'll blend a little bit more ambient right there. Yeah, that was the issue. Okay, there we go. Blend a little bit more. Whoops, blend a little bit more of that window. Awesome possum. And now all we got to do are these windows in the back. And then maybe a little bit of a warming and stuff like that. Darken. And I know these windows are going to be a pain, so I'm just going to cut them out. Or not cut them out, just do a cheeky little selection and I'm holding down shift to make two selections at this at uh, the same time just a little bit this one didn't do too much but it did bring back a little bit of the the edge all right cool now what now wh oh yeah that's an issue right there select our previous window pool layer just get rid of this. Whoops. Get rid of that. Cool. 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 Everything looks good. All right. Now I want to fix the ceiling and all that other jazz. But actually, before I do that, let's get rid of all this. Actually, no. What? Just uh, Shift Option Command E. We'll do this all on one layer. I want to start with this because it's this is the the ugh can't talk. This is a big glaring issue. So J, Shift J will allow you to get to the patch tool, and we are just going to make a little selection here, and we are just going to drag it, deselect, get this maybe a little bit. There we go. And there we go. Cool. That looks weird though. Let me redo that. Actually, let me use the uh, the clone stamp tool. Select this. Make sure we are on all layers. And I'm gonna choose a flow of about 30%. Make sure we're lined up there. Cool. Now we can go ahead and just take that dark area and move it over here there we go that's looking good except for this this looks weird let's go ahead and fix that whoops let's go ahead and put that back I'm gonna go ahead and fix that just like so awesome it looks pretty good we got a little bit of a a little bit of a dark spot here. Let's fix that. All right, cool. That's going to be good. Take this, move that over. And I'm going to take this. Ooh, that's a little bit too much. Take this, move that over. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult, so we're going to come back to that. J gets you the patch tool. Just move that over. All 
All right, cool. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not talking that much. <laughs> I kind of get into this a little bit too much. So this is bothering me though. So S get a little bit of that right there. And we'll just paint. And maybe get rid of this. Cool, cool, cool. What else? Oh yeah, this thing. That thing, that thingy thing. So I'm gonna want to make a pretty good selection of this, except for that. Because if I do, Make a selection of this. It's gonna smear. Yeah, that's not looking that great. Let me go to the lasso tool and make sure my lasso's at somewhere around 15%. Just to get a little bit of feathering there. Maybe move that up. Cool. And now we will fix that. Oops, a little bit too far there. Yeah, that looks believable. No one's going to question that. And then I want to fix the ceiling. It's looking a little bit drab, a little bit dull. Oh, wait, I want to fix this right here. Uh, da, 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 da. We're going to go plug in a lasso tool. Okay, J gets the patch tool. We are going to move this there. And then I want to fix that. S4, clone stamp tool. Yeah. No one's going to question that. I would, because I know what happened there. But no one's going to question it. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and fix the ceiling. So I want to do a pen tool path and we are going to make sure that our rubber band is on. And we are going to make a cool little path. Hold down command and click a point that will allow you to basically move it like so. And I like to do these small, not too, not too small, but like little increments and I'm going to make a bezier curve and that's just done by pressing and holding clicking and holding I should say let me move this over here command let me move this over here command that looks good okay cool fix this way up there Let me get this all the way done. Just like so. There we go. Now we're at the end. Command zero. It's going to fit to screen and we will command enter or command return, I guess, on the Mac. And then function shift F6. We're going to feather that by about a pixel. Now what we can do Go to adjustments, replace color. We're going to make that selection. And we are just going to desaturate that. Okay, desaturated. Maybe a little bit of brightness here. Press OK. And I want to fix this area. It's still looking a little bit weird. So I'm going to go with the dodge tool. Select midtones, and I'm going to choose 15% exposure. We're just going to paint a little bit. Just painting. All right. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty convincing to me. All right. Now I kind of want to warm this up because it's looking a little bit drab. Let's go ahead and make a, where is it? What am I looking for? 
Can't find it. Photo filter. Yeah, photo filter and then set that bad boy to soft light. And I'm gonna choose somewhere around 40 and then, or 30. Yeah, 30 is looking pretty good. And that is snazzy. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and do, 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 do. flatten that image. Command S to save. And then from here we can do a little bit of a highlights adjustment, Maybe a little bit of shadows adjustment, pull the whites up a little bit, pull the blacks down, not so much. And then uh, we're gonna actually bring the highlights down a little bit more. Cool. And then I want to bring up the vibrance, just a, just a hair. And then I'll do some sharpening, take my masking, bring that up. And then I want to do a little bit of noise reduction. Yeah, there we go. So that looks pretty good. I would consider that a done photo. Maybe a little bit of vertical adjustment. See what auto does. Yeah, auto looks better. And then, uh, yeah, we're done. Let me turn this off real quick. There we go. So we went from this to that, from that to this. Pretty nifty, I would say. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, this tutorial was such a train wreck. Um, I wish I explained things a little bit better, but that's... You live and you learn, okay? You live and you learn. All right. Anyway, take care, everyone.